and welcome to La Liga Loca Africa. This show is all about bringing you La Liga news and insights from the African continent. Great to be with you for episode two. We have another packed show lined up today. Here's what you can look forward to. In this episode, we chat La Liga with Mbulelo Tinta and Lorenz Kola. We hear from footballer turned TV pundit Alberto and two fans go head to head in the big prize giveaway. The first El Clasico of the season took place on the 16th of October in the nation's capital, Madrid. Here in Africa, La Liga arranged 10 watch parties across the continent. From Morocco to Nigeria, Ghana, and right here in South Africa, fans gathered for a great day out. It ended up being a wonderful occasion for Real Madrid fans. A commanding victory over Barcelona, thanks to goals from Karim Benzema, Fede Valverde, and Rodrigo. Plenty to celebrate, not only in Madrid, but here in Africa too. Let's chat a little bit more about El Clasico with the two guests alongside me now. Mbulelo Tinta is a podcaster, broadcaster, and football fundi. Lorenz Kohler joins us for the first time on La Liga Loca Africa. He's an award-winning journalist, and we're putting him on the spot first up. We're going to start with the Clasico, but also what a 24 hours it turned out to be for Karim Benzema, because he went from scoring in the Clasico to then being named the best footballer in the world. Yeah, I think from my perspective, it was an undisputed choice. Um, not a lot of people debated about it. He scored many goals. I can feel Mbulelo's giving you the evil <laughs> eye because he doesn't agree, I think. It makes me mad, Julia, you know, is I don't think you can be the best in the world. Like in boxing, you know, the champion always has a leg up. Sadio Mane has been the best player in the world for me for the last four years. And, and I don't think it's close other than, you know, what they've done with uh, Mo Salah is that I don't think it's close. He is the greatest because he's got the greatest ability in sport availability. What I love about him is he's never injured. Karim Benzema is an injury prone guy. So, so for me, Ballon d'Or, I'm not sure what's going on. I can feel the heat emanating here. Pretty sure the fact that they won La Liga and the Champions League counts in his favour. So and his, his role in it as well. Everybody says that. And then I say to people, if it's about prizes, I remember a tiny little man called Xavi Hernandez at the World Cup. He had all of them and he was still denied that prize after 2010. So I'm not having it's a prize thing. Because when Fabio Cannavaro won it, he had an absolute shocker with Real Madrid and just won the World Cup and you gave him the Ballon d'Or. So we need to make our mind up. Is it about prizes or is it just the guy we like? It's Sadio Mane for me, Julia, and I'm not moving off this one. I think if you look at Kylian Mbappe, 60 goal and assist in that same calendar year, and he didn't even make the top six. So it's not always about individuals. It's a, it's a collective who won the trophies and who's influential in that run of winning trophies. I mean, Mane won AFCON. He did really well with Liverpool. He's doing well with, with Bayern. But I think it's like, if you look at people like Lewandowski, who's yep. never won the, the Ballon d'Or, I don't think it's it's a, it's a divine right for Mane to have won it. Yeah, what's the template? It, <laughs> I, I need to go to Switzerland. Take, what other... There is no template. It depends in that moment. All I care about yep. is the video that Benzema's going to drop. <laughs> Yeah. after now winning the Ballon d'Or. Man had his baby mama yeah. and his <laughs> girlfriend in the crowd. Now we're just waiting for the video. And he dressed like Tupac. Oh, come <laughs> on, don't forget about dressing like Tupac. Let's talk about the Clasico though. Just your thoughts on, on Real Madrid. In that moment, Barcelona had matched them for points at the top of La Liga. And I thought were probably favourites going into it, although they didn't have a great record at Madrid's home ground. Yeah, I think it was a clear case of a mean against boys. I think we're going to touch on this later with Tony Cruz, Valverde. These are very experienced players they have know how. And Carlo Ancelotti, who wasn't a popular choice at first, has just put the pieces together. He's always a calm, calm demeanor. And he works with a, a very, you know, experienced squad, tight-knit squad. And where Barcelona, young players like Pedri, Gavi, they're still in transition. And obviously, the things that's happening in the background also affects the psyche a little bit. So I, I was expecting Madrid to win it, but I mean, not that comfortably. Mm -mm. Let's talk about Tony Kroos. You mentioned him, a very commanding performance in midfield, knew exactly when to keep tactical yep. shape and knew exactly when to break forward. His long ball so critical in the break of play that uh, on the counter that Madrid uh, managed on the day. This is a man we thought was going to retire. 
Julia, he, he's the greatest midfielder Real Madrid have ever had as a complete package. Um, with five uh, Champions League titles in now, with four La Ligas in, and he, he's in cruise control. He is, I've, I've argued this with many people, he's the greatest complete midfielder because he can play the libero, he can play from six, he can play the eight, he can play the ten. And for all of the great Galacticos they've had before, you've never had somebody this complete who's done it over this much time. He's the greatest, he really is for me. You've mentioned another guy as well, Fede Valverde. Now, I'm personally paying very close attention to this bet he has. Says he doesn't want his manager to retire early because of him. I <laughs> uh, have a bet with Ancelotti that he must score 10 goals this season. He scored against Alce, taking him up to six with two assists. Remarkable start to the season for the Uruguayan. Yeah, I think he's probably one of the most important players because you can put that guy anywhere. I'm sure if you put him in polls, he'll put, <laughs> a, nine, he'll put a nine out of 10 uh, performance as well. And he's just got everything as well, like Cruz. I think he's, he's the natural successor for Luka Modric, but he brings so much more. He brings energy, passing range, he can shoot, he can, you know, defend as well. So I think his, his position is very underrated in the team and it gives them a lot of balance that they didn't have previously. So, you know, Vinny's always flying down the left and he brings, he can come, he can duck inside as a midfielder, he can help out the right back, he can go forward. So that's just the luxury to have for for Carlo Ancelotti. It really is, because he, he gives you that power that Barcelona are probably missing that yeah. element. Is there's a lot of tick attacker, but listen, in the end, football is a physical sport. He gives you the technical now, but my goodness, he's mm. box to box, and like you say, he can play anywhere. He's one to watch. He it's, really it's is. Like Luis Suarez when he was at Barcelona, he had that grit yeah. in the front line for yeah. that. No, fantastic. Player. He's probably had a very close up uh, watch of his country. <laughs> You mentioned one more thing. What's happening behind the scenes at Barcelona? Remarkable that they come into this game level with Real Madrid. Obviously, that's changed now. Um, but there's talk of the manager and his job. Yeah, I think it's ridiculous to think he just started recently and he's been doing very well under the circumstances, you know, having to mix and match, you know, getting a free agent here, you know, selling players here and there. And we all know the financial difficulties that Barcelona find themselves in. And I think just the style of play that is implemented that I think they lost the identity over the last few seasons. He's brought that back and he's got, I mean, teenagers in midfield and he's competing for the title. So I think it's a bit premature. I think he's got the impossible job, right? Is that Barcelona and uh, Real Madrid are very unique clubs. Is that everybody thought Luis Enrique would get, get time and they'd love him. It's, listen, they are in business to win. Let's not associate the player and think, are oh, they thinking, let's hug him, he's one of our very own. They have shown before. I mean, the best way to predict uh, the future is the past. They will sack you if you aren't delivering is, I don't think they're bluffing, is they are, we win here. Like we don't care, Xavi Hernandez, you, you were brilliant as a player, but we separate that man from what we got you. He has got an impossible job. And personally, I don't think he makes it till the end of the season because I think managing's hard enough, but when you've got to manage chaos as well, I mean, he's still learning. Yeah, managing in Qatar is not this. You know, every Friday you're on, manager, it's around the world. So. I don't think Xavi will make the end of the season. I really believe that. Now we are counting down to the FIFA World Cup Qatar 2022, kicking off on the 20th of November. Five nations representing the African continent, Ghana, Senegal, Cameroon, Tunisia and Morocco. And plenty of players who ply their trade in La Liga will feature for those five nations. Who are you most looking forward to seeing? So first of all, why do we never talk about the North African guys? Because for me, they play the best like European global style football. They're a great tournament team. So for me, there's only one, one guy. I love goalkeepers because they are crazy. And I think Morocco has the craziest brand. And, and he's also brilliant. I mean, Zamora Trophy winner, we saw his performance against um, my beloved Inter Milan. I mean, he was an absolute wall in that uh, Europa League final. You know, Bonu for me is just something special. And I, I just love his, the way he plays football. So, so for me, he's a real leader. And I love a goalkeeper leader. Ike Casillas will always have a special place in my heart because I just love like, Oliver Kahn, that strong drive from keeper. So look out for that one. I think it could get him that one big move that, that he may be seeking. I mean, Sevilla I love, but you know, I think there's another level for him. Lorenz is also looking forward to seeing a Moroccan player. Who have you chosen? I think Yusuf Vinyasiri, um, because he's a goal scorer, first and foremost. He hasn't had the best season for Sevilla, but for Morocco, he's, he's like their talisman. And he's the one that they're going to look forward to, 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 to scoring the goals for, for Morocco. I think Morocco and Senegal are obviously the two standout representatives of Africa, who many believe will, can go further than the group stages. So, yeah, there obviously are a couple of other players, like from Senegal, that's in La Liga, but these are the two standout players who can make a difference at Qatar. Someone you like from Senegal and La Liga, plays for Real Betis, is Sabali. Um, you think he's going to do well? 
Yeah, I think look, he's, he's been out of the reckoning for, for a couple of years under Cissé, but he's got tournament experience. He's played in AFCON before. And I think just because, you know, the form that Betis is showing, so he has a, a strong, um, you know, a strong chance of, 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 of getting back into the starting level under Cissé, just because of the pedigree and the level that he's playing at in, you know, in La Liga right now. And that's great, you, isn't it? Um, if you're old like me, you remember 2002. <laughs> the Senegalese celebrations, we need them scoring all of the goals because the celebrations are the best, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, I like one way. No, I'm surprised you guys did not pick Inyaki Williams because we're going to be seeing him for Ghana. You've already mentioned he's the Black Stars star now. Um, so I'm looking forward to seeing him play. Strong team as well. You, we see what they've done, recruited all of the, the, the guys from England as well, from Spain. So, hey, he, he's going to be in a great place because he's, got, he's going to have Tariq Lamptey. He's going to get service. He's not going to be short of service, and we know what he is. He, he's proper. Yeah, I think they get one of the best transfer windows of all international. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I look. I've watched Ghana the last few few games. It hasn't been looking too good, but hopefully, when it comes to that excitement of you know the, the World Cup, they'll maybe click into place and you know so, show this is what the Black Stars are made of because they've been on a decline. Anybody playing Brazil is going to struggle. Let's yeah. be honest. Uh, yeah, going yeah. in it as favourites and world number one. So I watched that game too. <laughs> but they played a, a country that I've never heard. Man, I know all the countries. <laughs> yeah. What is Nick Nico? Nico Nicaragua. Uh, Nicaragua. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where, did, where did they come from? <laughs> and they, they struggled against them. So that was, that's where I'm talking about. Anybody from Nicaragua is watching this, we do apologize that Lorenz <laughs> does not know his geography. No, just... Guys, thank you so much. It's been absolutely great chatting. World Cup with you. Good luck to Spain in the group of death. Looking forward to that one as well and seeing all the La Liga stars perform on the global stage. Lorenz Kohler, who's an award-winning journalist, and Mbulelo Tinta, who has about 10 titles. We'll just call him a broadcaster and podcaster for that. Up next, we have an interview with a man who played football at the highest level and is now a TV pundit, Alberto. Alberto Ejogo Owono, welcome to La Liga Loca Africa. Great to have you on the show today. Hello, Juliet. It's a pleasure for me to join you. Let's get stuck in, starting with Samuel Eto, a man who represented both Barcelona and Real Madrid. Was he really the first African player to make a big impact in La Liga? Yeah, for sure. Maybe Tommy Encono, a Cameroonian goalkeeper for, for Espanyol. Maybe it was the first one, but the, the highest impact uh, was uh, for Samuel Eto uh, because of his speed, because of his uh, character, uh, scoring goals in La Liga, being a, a trophy winner as well in Champions League. So a high impact. I think the first one is Samuel Eto, yes. Iñaki Williams was born in Spain and made his international debut for Spain in 2016. But this year, he chose to represent Ghana at international level. What does that tell us about the passion and pride in and around African football at the moment? We are proud if, if some big player uh, embraces his roots, no? uh, goes to, to defend no? the, the country of of his parents. He's the, the fastest uh, player in, in La Liga, and now he has joined the, the Ghana uh, international team. It's curious because Iñaki Williams will play with Ghana, and Nico Williams, his young uh, brother, uh, probably will play with, with Spain, no? that, that company. But uh, we are proud, all African people, that uh, a big player like Iñaki Williams will play with, with Ghana, with the Black Stars. Eduardo Camavinga was born in Angola. He now represents France internationally. Is this a player who's going to reach the levels of a Modric or a Chris in the Real Madrid team? <laughs> it is, it's difficult. It's difficult to, to reach that, that level. No? Now, uh, Eduardo Camavinga and Aurelien Chouameni, uh, with, is, uh, with, with uh, Cameroonian uh, roots, they are trying to uh, be the next generation of the midfield of Real Madrid. They are a different kind of, of player, but Camavinga has something very special. That's his uh, great character. Okay, he's very young uh, yet. He's not uh, 20 years old, but um, uh, his left foot, uh, his pace in the pitch, personality, character. Uh, I think he will be a great, great player. But it's uh, early to say if he will reach that that level because uh, if we think about uh, Modric and uh, Cross, we are talking about probably one of the top three best midfielders uh, in the history of the football. Elix Moriba is on loan at Valencia from Bundesliga club RB Leipzig. What do you think is the difference between Spanish and German football? The main difference between the German and the Spanish uh, football is that in Germany, the, the, the matches are mm, 
maybe faster, uh, maybe um, you can see more highlights and in Spain it's something uh, more under control, okay, more tactical, everything is, um, I wouldn't say slower, but more tactical, more control. I think that there are more, there is more talent in Spain than in Germany. But in Germany, the match is, is flying all the time. You has, you see some uh, someone that is shooting there and another big occasion there, maybe some goals, some penalty. And in Spain, everything is more quiet, more controlled, and uh, more tactical. I would say. Thank you so much for your time. It's been great having you with us on La Liga Loca Africa. It was a pleasure. Bye. Now it's time for the fan quiz. We put two fans against each other. They go head to head in the battle for a fantastic prize. This episode, the prize is, well, we've arranged the prize for the runner up, but it's a La Liga hamper, which includes a t-shirt and a pretty cool uh, African inspired La Liga mug. Passion, that's what it says. The big prize though is FIFA 23 PS4 game. So let's meet the contenders now. This is the prize that they're battling for. In the far corner, please introduce yourself and tell us which club you support. Hi, my name is Jerome and I support Barcelona. And the guy next to you also supports Barcelona. Please introduce yourself. Hello, as you can see, yes, I am a Barca fan and my name is Tepo. Okay, Jerome and Tepo, how it works. I will ask a question. You'll then shout your name. Uh, whoever says their name first, I'll prompt you to answer. If you don't get the question correct, I'm gonna give the battler, uh, your opponent, a chance to then answer the question, okay? The one with the highest number of uh, points obviously wins. We also have some tiebreaker questions ready for you guys. How are you feeling, nervous? Ready. Ah, uh, Jerome's pants. <laughs> okay, let's go, La Liga quiz. Who were the first ever winners of La Liga? Tepo. Real Madrid. Is incorrect. Jerome, I'm giving you a chance. I'm going to go with Barcelona. Hey, Jerome <laughs> knows his team. That's one point <laughs> to Jerome. Sorry, Tepo, you're wearing the shirt, but I sh Okay, question number two. What was the first title RC Deportivo won? Tepo. The Copa del Rey. Is correct. It's one all. The equalizer. Question number three. Which is the oldest club in Spain? Tepo. <laughs> <laughs> you don't sound convinced of your own name. Yeah, Let's no, see no. if you got the answer. <laughs> the oldest club for me sounds like Espanol. Oh, you would think, but no. Do you want to give it a go? Uh, let's go with Real Madrid. No, it's Recreativo de Huelva. So no one gets a point there. Okay, guys, we're into the um, tiebreakers. Even though we don't have a tie, I'm gonna just ask one tiebreaker because you've probably been the most entertaining, but the worst in terms of answers. Let's be honest. All right. <laughs> Which Spanish footballer served Barcelona for a long time in the midfield before moving on to Qatar in 2014? Oh, come on, come on. <laughs> Chavi. Okay. Is no. the winner. Uh, no, bar or something. <laughs> no, there's no VAR. <laughs> I am the VAR. So, Tepo uh, winning the FIFA 23 PS4 game. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, you want to make a speech for your fans? Yeah. Uh, as I said, my name is Tepo. And funny enough, I have a YouTube channel that speaks about football, but it's mainly in other leagues, but I also do touch on La Liga. Blue Footy TV, please go and subscribe on YouTube. Thank you so much. Okay, so Tepo using his very controversial win to plug himself, go and follow him. Uh, congratulations, Jerome, as well, for being such a great sport. Thank you to all of you for joining us. That's all we have time for on La Liga Loca Africa, episode two, bringing you the best news and insights on La Liga from an African perspective. Don't forget to follow us on our social media channels. We look forward to interacting with you. Looking forward to seeing you next time as well on La Liga Loca Africa.